Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the Fairmont City Schools Board of Education regular meeting, Thursday, April 18, 2021. <coughs> Please stand for the uh, Pledge of Allegiance. Michael, are you with us? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible. Thank you, Mike. Roll call, please. Mr. McCord. Here. Mr. Browning. Here. Mrs. Millard. Here. Ms. Reeser. Here. Mr. Wilson. Here. I do number three to approve the agenda as presented. That's and correct. Oh, and that's correct. Is that right? Uh, may I have a motion? Second. Thank you, Mary. Thank you, Andy. Roll call, please. Ms. Reeser. Yes. Mr. Wilson. Yes. Mr. Browning. Yes. Mrs. Millard. Yes. Mr. McCord. Yes. Motion carried. Next, approve the minutes of the Thursday, March 4th, 2021 regular meeting. May I have a motion? So moved. Thanks, Jerry. Second. Second. Third. <laughs> All right. Okay. Roll call, please. Mr. Browning. Yes. Mrs. Malak. Yes. Mr. Wilson. Yes. Ms. Reeser. Yes. Mr. McCord. Yes. Board reports for good the order. Mary, would you like to start us out? Uh, sure. Um, I don't have a whole lot to report over last month. Um, it has been super fun to get out and see the Supreme Court. And the ones I'm not able to get out and see, you can see the pictures on Facebook that families are posting and Facebook lives. Um, it's it's really good to view to some sense of normalcy. So that's what I'm asking. Katie, anything? Uh, yes. Um, so our winter band program uh, finished up. The winter party finished with all superior readings for their um, Mindy's Performance Association. That was pretty exciting that the kids got to get out and um, perform finally. Yeah. <laughs> um, we had a, the marching band kick off for next year. It looks like we'll be operating under a fairly normal schedule. So, um, parades and all of that. Look forward to seeing the kids um, moving about town for that. Jazz Fest will be coming up on May 21st. Uh, so, we're planning big tents in the parking lot and food trucks and all sorts of um, fun things to go along with the basket raffles that we usually have, so please consider um, getting tickets and coming out for that. And then uh, lastly, it's so exciting to see all the senior banners going up around town. Um, it's one of my favorite things, although it's probably not good for my driving record because <laughs> I tend to suffer broken faces. <laughs> so, um, but that's, thank you for everyone who's worked so hard to get those pictures out and up. And uh, I know it makes so many of our families Especially during this time when they have so little, the seniors have so little else to look forward to. Um, that's a really special thing. So thank you for those people that are working for that. Thank you, Katie. Amy? Uh, in attending a couple of Zoom calls uh, for public education advocacy groups that uh, I'm a member of, including the uh, know about the potential lawsuits for the uh, voucher uh, issue. Uh, quite a number of presentations have been made by members of that group to various uh, USCs throughout the state. So this is a great approach to it because the, the, all of the superintendents that are members of that group are the USC and the group. So we get the word out quickly to the superintendents involved in that. So, uh, uh, just got uh, off a call with the public education partner group uh, about uh, activities there. Uh, that, uh, that, uh, we're trying to, to deliver bring awareness to the, the best choice option in education, which is our public schools, which are controlled by the, the local people, but they're our city here that stand for election and are accountable to the community. So. Um, other than that, not much. I am looking forward to in-person graduation this year. Uh, 
Early voting is uh, out there for the May election. So uh, if, you're, if you're eligible, please make sure you vote. Uh, we do have a uh, replacement level on the ballot, and we appreciate support of that. Thank you, Randy. Gary? Yeah, just a couple things. Uh, one, <laughs> welcome everybody back from spring break. Hopefully, everybody had a happy and safe uh, spring break. And I want to comment about the banner. I think that's a really good tradition. Uh, Katie mentioned it a little bit the other day. Started last year, and we need to keep that going. It's fun for the kids to get to see themselves up uh, on the, the street lights and the light poles and stuff around town. And then spring sports, you know, it's uh, it's neat that the kids get to be kids when they're participating in sports. And and I didn't get to go to any of the indoor events this year that Katie was talking about, but. You know, that's another place where kids get to be kids uh, participating in those kind of things. So I, I think it's neat that that stuff going on right now. Thank you. Jerry. Uh, just to echo about Dan, it seems like every year the band increases in numbers. Uh, the principals are the directors. Everybody who takes care of that uh, just doing a fabulous job. And uh, it's a great way for a kid to get out they work, uh, they work probably harder than the athletes do, maybe longer <laughs> uh, as well, but uh, it, it's just a great thing for us. And, and I tell you, I, be it music, be it athletics, I don't think our kids realize how they represent our town. And uh, I think it's important for them to know that they are the ambassadors of our schools and of our town, and, and uh, but they are very much appreciated for their hard work, not only in the class or virtual or however they're doing it, but uh, they do a great job. Uh, the athletics, starting with spring sports uh, with the baseball and the softball and uh, all the rest of them with uh, track, it, it, it all bringing that warm weather out and, and the kids get out and parents get out and just a great thing to uh, to watch when you get a chance to see them. Um, <clears throat> uh, as well, uh, some of our projects still going on. Uh, you'll hear from Mr. Patrick this evening an update on the uh, construction, but uh, the intermediate continues to uh, build more walls daily, having good weather to do so. And uh, of course, uh, you know, we're all excited about the, uh, the project when it comes to be at the high school and uh, still working a lot of time, a lot of hours in on that. So uh, it's an exciting time for Fairborn City Schools and for the kids in Fairborn City Schools. And uh, I think a lot of times they just bring us along for the ride. But it's, it's nice to be along for the ride and it's great to see their excitement. So that's all I have. Oh, Mr. Philo. Um, under public comments, uh, we have one speaker tonight, Mr. President. Uh, that's Lori Venable. Uh, Lori, if you want to approach, direct your comments to the Board of Education. You have a maximum of five minutes. Well, I'm trying to see you. I don't have one. What? Maybe not. I don't have one. Maybe not. 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 Uh, from the back files, I guess, sir. And we want to personally thank you for taking the time um, when we came to you last month, just last month, and um, researching and putting your our kids and your staff first. So we appreciate what you've done to support the city. Um, I'm re representing not only the core group, and by the way, Kathy Lester continues to say thank you as well. But um, the larger group that has almost 500 people now. So we are growing by the day, and hopefully we can make it a uh, Fairborn better place too. So thank you so much for your short turnaround when we just came to you last month. Thanks. Well, thank you, Lori. We'll get some presentations, Mr. Lawler.
Good evening, everyone. This is always the best part of the night when you can recognize our community in various ways, whether it's businesses, institutions, and most of all, our students. So I've got about three or four things I want to recognize. The only one is listed there tonight, but I've got a couple others that just came in, and I don't want to push those off until the next month. But first up, I am very proud to recognize one of our high school students. Fairborn High School student Mallory Wordle was recently awarded the uh, Guard Good Citizenship Award as a Southwest District Guard Good Citizen winner. And via Guard stands for Daughters of American Revolution. So Mallory was also the state runner up for the Guard Good Citizen Award. As I mentioned, Mallory is a senior and an outstanding representative of Fairborn High School. Mrs. Marty Riddle, regent for the Rebecca Galloway chapter of the NSBAR, presented Mallory with her award used uh, in the recent past, correct? Yes. The Dark Good Citizen Award and Scholarship Contest was created in 1934 is intended to encourage and reward the qualities of good citizenship. This award recognizes and rewards individuals who possess the qualities of dependability, service, leadership, and patriotism in their homes, schools, and communities. These students are selected by their teachers and peers because they demonstrate these qualities to an outstanding degree. This program is only open to high school seniors whose schools are accredited by their state board of education. Only one student per year may be honored as a school's darn good citizen. This award highlights an incredible four years for Mallory at Fairborn High School. During her time, she has participated in the following. The Treasurer of the Senior Class, Student Congress and Leo Club, President of Interact Club, and participated in Junior Leadership, Dayton, and Rotary Youth Scholarship Awards. Mallory is a member of Student Congress, Student Ambassador, Team Advisory, Spanish Club, Varsity Letterman, Lead Role in Spring Musical, National Honor Society, and the HOAS Futures, Future Health Professionals and Top Scholar. Now, thank you. Before I go on, Mallory, when do you have time to do school? <laughs> <laughs> Mallory is also active in her church and participates in the worship team. She volunteers at the Greene County Library for the Fairborn Branch and also works as lifeguard at the Fairborn YMCA and at the Green Valley Recreation Center in Beaver Creek while maintaining a 4.75 GPA. Way to go. Muscle. Mallory is part of an outstanding family. She's the daughter of Mark and Marcy Wardle of Fairborn. And Marcy, Mrs. Wardle, teaches here in our school system, outstanding teacher for our kids. Uh, she does plan to attend Miami University. Okay. <laughs> And upon graduation, and major in <coughs> excuse me, public health. Congratulations! And before I go on any further, I would like to introduce. We have a representative here from Dar tonight, and that is Janet Walker, and she would like to say a few words also. Okay. I'm proud to be here representing our chapter, um, Rebecca Galloway. Happy Daughters of American Revolution, and so proud that we could award the good citizenship to you, and you totally deserve it. You're totally earned. Very proud. So thank you for being here. Thank you, Mr. Walker. Again, these are always the highlights when we can recognize, especially our, our outstanding students. Bear with me because I got to refer to my cell phone on this next one. Yeah. 
we had an outstanding award, award that we won the third one in the room this year. And you are all invited to celebrate the Fairborn Intermediate School as they will be receiving the Ohio Association of Elementary School Administrators Hall of Fame Award on April the 20th of February 5. And this is under the leadership of Betsy Wyatt, Tammy Dendro, and Patty Wright, and an amazing staff at FIS who continues to demonstrate excellence in their efforts to promote student success. Congratulations to all at FIS for bringing this honor to their school and our district. The OAESA Hall of Fame Recognition Program recognizes exemplary educational programs that go above and beyond meeting the needs of students for the elementary and middle schools across the state. A select few schools are recognized annually through the OAESA Hall of Fame School Recognition Program. This award has been distributed since 1984, and this will be the second time that Fairborn Intermediate School has been recognized as a Hall of Fame school with their first award in 2011. So congratulations to our entire staff and administrators at the Intermediate School. A couple more recognitions here. Um, Wright State Athletic Department recently donated hundreds of t-shirts to the Fairborn City Schools, which has been distributed to the buildings. So a big thank you to the Wright State for thinking of Fairborn. And finally, just to let you know, Fairborn City Schools has partnered with the Green County Children's Services to protect all children during Child Abuse Neglect Month. And just to remind everyone, the theme for this month is one voice, one child, and it does take a community to protect a child. So again, we, we uh, are, are very fortunate to have a great working relationship with Wright State and the uh, Green County Children's Services. Thank you, and that's my report for today. Ms. Roberts, would you possibly give a picture yes, of the yeah, Just for sake of order, come up right here. Thank you, Mr. McCord. Other presenters from the city, yes, uh, Green County uh, <coughs> Sir, Mr. Mike Eaker. Uh, <laughs> Good evening, Mr. President, Board, Superintendent. Uh, just want to have a short report. Uh, but I would have done this last month, except I was on crutches and under heavy sedation. <laughs> that would have been much more interesting to watch. Um, probably the best news is that uh, with the, the uh, start of the second semester, uh, Career Center was back on uh, uh, full in person instruction and we have not had any issues. So that's, that, you know, I can't think of any better news than, than the ability of the teachers to actually teach in person and, and, and do the communication thing that. Uh, it's so necessary to give them what they need. Um, other news, we auctioned off the old facility, the one on West Eden, that if you didn't know you were, if you weren't looking for it, you weren't going to find it. 
Uh, we actually got $1.6 million from a group that intends to reconfigure it to teach career skills to at-risk youth and recovering uh, addicts, uh, adults. Um, we have another property, the Ag Research uh, Center, uh, the ARC, located on Brush Road. You may not be familiar with it. That's where we have uh, we had uh, our veterinary sciences and equestrian uh, uh, programs. Well, the veterinary science program moved to the main campus when the, uh, when the new facility opened in August, and the uh, uh, equestrian program is so small that it just doesn't it, it doesn't make sense. Uh, by any, and and we really had no we had no uh, students that were going on into the uh, uh, equestrian uh, sciences beyond high school. It was sort of a fun thing for them to do. So we are we canceled we're canceling that at the end of this semester. We're going to auction off that building on the uh, 3rd of June. Um, if you're interested in, in, in what, what's going on, you can go to the uh, Sheridan Associates Auction website. They were the ones that handled the, uh, the West Enon property and, uh, and are going to handle the, the brush row of the art. The, uh, in terms of looking forward, um, you know, we had a huge, uh, we had a nice increase last year. It looks like the increase this year is going to be in, uh, eclipse last year. In fact, it already has. We're uh, well over 400 um, soon-to-be juniors that have already signed up for programs. And nearly half of our 22 programs are at capacity or even have a waiting list. So very popular. Um, I think the, uh, we had an open house that was the best attended that, that we've ever had. So um, I think it's a combination of new facility. I, I say that knowing that you're going to build a new high school. And so all the things that you're doing uh, should be reflected in, in, in more people moving into Fairborn, more uh, students, uh, and, and, and more spirit. Um, in other news, the, uh, the Career Center has, has, in, uh, has entered into an agreement, a partnership with Bellbrook and Sugar Creek Schools, much like the one we have with Beaver Creek, in that we're going to provide the teachers, the curriculum, the equipment to teach engineering classes in their middle school. So they're going to start in this at the sixth grade uh, with, uh, with engineering technology programs. The classes align with uh, then with the engineering and other programs that are offered at the main campus so that students who wish to attend in the junior year will be prepared uh, to do that. And oh, by the way, as an aside, it's saving Bellbrook a considerable amount of money uh, by turning that over to us. One other, oh, that is, yeah. The pandemic obviously has affected uh, competitions, and it's, and, and people may not be uh, aware of it, that the, the Career Center has um, uh, career technical student organizations in every program. Probably most of the one everybody knows about is the FFA, but we have it for everything from um, aviation to, uh, uh, to our, uh, our cyber, to our uh, robotics, uh, and they all had it. And this year, because of, of COVID, they're, they're, we're doing a lot of uh, virtual rather than in person. We hope to, well, this will be the one and only opportunity to do that, or second and only opportunity to do that. So, if anybody's interested in monitoring the uh, results, they can go to our school website and Facebook pages for updates. We'll keep everything up to date as best we can. That'll, you'll be able to you'll keep track of the uh, students as they go through the competition. 25 May is our senior recognition date, uh, and that's going to be in person down at the, uh, uh, going back to uh, the Nutter Center. So we're back on track there. And, uh, and I think that's about all I have to report. Are there any questions? Yeah, good to see you on the yeah, Career right. Center lately. So good press there. Yeah. It, it, it's, uh, at one, one of the things that we're trying to do is to attract is knowing that that whether you go to college or not, most you know, most of the of the uh, uh, jobs in Ohio uh, don't require a, a degree. Yeah. So uh, if, we can, if I if I can, if, if you're not going, if you're going to do something that ends in studies, why don't you come and get a skill? We'll give you a skill, a certificate, a diploma, and a job, and no loans to pay back. <laughs> it's a kind of an interesting concept. So that's not. <laughs> And we're, mm -hmm. apparently that's a that's a formula that seems to be working in this day and age. Yeah. And right, I will tell you right now, the trades are crying for people. Yeah. In fact, if, if 
he, he can't go anywhere without running into a, a help wanted sign. And we're trying to satisfy that. So thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, thank you Mike. <clears throat> Next, we have uh, doing our monthly financial report. Mr. Filo. Second is the uh, bond sale results, and the third is the renewal levy that's on the ballot here in May of 2021. Um, first, when we talk about the financial status, it's quite a different what a year makes. Uh, a year ago, uh, we were facing uncertainty both in finances and in regular life. Um, we did not know what the pandemic would bring to us. Um, we had received state cuts. Um, they were first announced at 1.6 million. They've been reduced down to 1.1 million. We did not know in terms of property tax or income tax if we see huge unemployment, if we see huge dips in delinquency. Um, happy to report that our income tax only was down uh, three to five percent, and the property tax was about the same. So it really did not have the great impact uh, that we feared. Um, we have spent probably another million to a million and a half dollars um, on personnel, on PPE equipment, um, and things to get us through this last year, and that also was a distance learning. Um, but we're also fortunate that the federal monies, um, CARES Act 1, 2, and 3, has helped the district. CARES Act 1, we received a little over a million dollars, so that sort of offsets the state cuts. Um, we're just in the process of uh, planning for uh, CARES Act 2. And then we haven't quite got the numbers that it cares back three. So, um, so overall, the thing I want people to remember is we're still in a strong financial position. Um, a year ago, we were worried that this could all change. So the great thing is we're still in a great financial position. The second is the bond sale results. If you saw your Fairborn Daily Herald on uh, Tuesday, um, we had excellent results with our bond sale. We we're very aggressive as soon as it passed in November to work to try to get those to market as soon as we could. We achieved an average interest rate of 2.65%, which is almost an all time low. Uh, one of the notes that we sold was almost the lowest that day. And we're pleased the way we structured these is that we're able to, the voters originally passed the, the bond issue the last 37 years. We were able to, through aggressive, um, Selling on these and the low market rates is we're able to cut off the last two years of that. So instead of a 37 year levy, it's going 35. That will save the taxpayers of Fairborn uh, millions of dollars. We also structured it that in 2026, a half a mil will drop off of the tax rolls, approximately 8% of the bond issue. Um, and that will save uh, Fairborn uh, taxpayers money as well. So we're very pleased with the, the bond sale results. We have the money in the bank, and we're working on designing the high school with them. So, <laughs> the third is the renewal levy. Um, we are on the ballot here in May 2021. Um, this is a renewal slash replacement. The main thing to remember on this is it will not raise property tax. This was first passed in 2007. Um, it brings in five million dollars annually. It originally passed for 8.6 million to raise. Um, that has been valued down to 7 mil because of the raising of the uh, uh, property value. It was first passed in 2007, renewed in 2012, and renewed in 2016. Um, so we felt it was appropriate to go back to the voters to try to make it for a continuous period of time 
Um, instead of having to do it every five years, because with renewals, people think, you know, did we just pass something? So hopefully, um, we've established that it is needed and necessary. Um, it is for a continuous period of time. And we'll also bring in, if there is new construction, uh, new growth, we'll bring a small amount of additional taxes. So um, we're working on the campaign right now with that data the website. You'll see next week, large signs and small signs go out. And the, the thing I want people to remember is, I think we're the only thing on the ballot here in Fairborn. And so we need to educate our people to go out and vote and encourage them that it is important we don't anticipate any problems. And we have a great story to tell here at Fairport of what we've accomplished. And we'll be seeing those signs going out. So, any questions? And a nice door. Thank you, Mr. Fylin. Got an update. Okay, first of all, we apologize. If you remember last month, I came to you with a uh, new HD AC system at the high school, and uh, this humidity in this room is because of that project. <laughs> so uh, it is on and is progressing, but uh, you can feel that there's some humidity in the air. Uh, so uh, I'll touch on that here in a little bit uh, where that project stands. Let me start with the primary school. As everyone in the room knows that uh, we've had some issues with fittings leaking. Uh, there's over 600 fittings that are to be replaced on the pipe that's two inches or smaller. And over spring break week, we started to replace those fittings in the preschool wing. And we started in the preschool wing due to the fact that it's a single floor right there. And uh, we wanted to try to figure out how much time it was going to take us to do that. So over spring break week, we were able to replace the fittings in that section. So during the month of April, we will now basically kind of come up with a game plan for how to proceed forward with the rest of the school. The preschool wing wasn't the easiest wing. Uh, very few little drywall that we had to cut through or anything. It was mostly ceiling tiles and so forth. So um, we hope to be working second shift starting the first part of May so that uh, the instructional process isn't disturbed by the kids. And as we go through this month, we'll kind of have a better idea how long the project will take us. I'm going to assume that they're going to be there through the month of June. It would be my prediction at this point in time. Um, it should not affect the air conditioning system. All the fittings are on the hot water loop, which is your heating for the building. So for the most part, we should be good to go as far as getting that work done. We've rearranged our custodial staff just a little bit to where when they do start in May, we will have our custodian will be the last person out of the building. So that he'll make sure everything's locked up, shut up, and secured before he leaves for the night. That was important to us. And then also at the primary school, you're going to start to see some of the landscaping that didn't get finished last fall start to get finished. Uh, from regrading the preschool playground, planting more grass, uh, I think there's some bushes that need to be done and trees. So some of that will get done, and then there's more landscaping that gets done when the five points building gets wiped out and everything gets readjusted. Over at the intermediate school, as bad as February was, the end of March and the first part of April has been actually very good for construction. So if, if you've had the opportunity to drive down Maple, you, you'll see quite a bit of progress has taken place over the last three weeks. We poured lots of floors. Uh, we have 10 masons on site. When I say masons, I mean trial. Just not the guys that are carrying block, but actually guys that can be laying them. Um, it doesn't sound like a lot. That's the most that we've had at that project. So I'd like to have more, but I'll take 10. And uh, continues to, to keep the project moving forward. Uh, we also, you'll see steel being put in place. The problem is we need to make sure that the masons keep ahead of the steel guys. If I don't have enough masons on the site where there's not enough block walls going up, then that basically means they can't be laying steel too. So hopefully we can stay in front of the steel guy. Um, that building's still on schedule to be moved into the summer of 2022. So I think overall, I'm pretty happy with where we're at with that building. I would say we're a few weeks behind still. 
But uh, what the progress we've made over the last couple of weeks, I have to admit, we're still in good shape. This current high school, as I said a little bit ago, uh, we've removed quite a few of the pipes that will no longer be needed when the new chiller and AC system goes in place. Uh, we'll be pouring a concrete pad out there where the chiller will go. The chiller have been ordered. And with some of the construction and materials, there's no chillers to be had anywhere. They're making them as they're ordered. So uh, it's not like you can call ahead and get one delivered. They're going to make it as we ordered it. So as soon as last month we uh, had the, the uh, Board of Education approve the resolution, the very next day, Mr. Philo put through a PO and uh, we got that order that same day. So we'll see how long that takes to progress, but uh, as soon as it's on its way, we'll be ready for it as far as the patio and the piping and so forth. Also out here at the football field this week, uh, we had Mercer Group. Uh, Mercer Group tore up some of the grass on the practice football field and uh, basically put down a new layer of sod. Uh, it will take about four to five weeks for that sod to really take hold. So we're trying to keep the kids and everybody off of it. Um, hopefully the roots take hold and so forth. It's one of those situations where you're gonna see it being watered when it's raining and that's okay. You can't ever water it at this point in time. So we're watching it, we're watering it. You'll start to see it turn a green. You'll notice that it's a little brown. If you've ever laid soft before, it turns a little brown at first. So it, it should be fine in four weeks. I have every bit of confidence that it'll be fine. For the future high school, um, everything has been cleared that can be cleared. So when I say that is, in the evaluation of the land, the two wetlands were determined to be present. Uh, one of the wetlands is basically just a continuation of the wetlands that's already there on the north side of the property. And uh, at this point in time, we really have no plans to really do anything with that wetlands. We just want to kind of leave it. Uh, I've learned more about wetlands over the last couple months than I really need to. Um, and there's things that you can do and things that you can't do. And if your water runs into an existing wetlands and it's considered a continuous wetlands, uh, and you run into what's called Beaver Creek, uh, then you have to get the Army Corps of Engineers and it becomes a federal. The other wetlands is an isolated wetlands, and we can do some stuff with isolated wetlands. So at this point in time, we're going to try to leave as much as the second wetlands as possible, but we do plan to either delineate or mitigate about a half an acre of it, which basically means we're going to use it. And we're either going to move part of a half an acre onto the property, buy credits, there's a lot that you can do, and Mr. Wilson has, has uh, been really working hard to try to figure that out too with one of his friends and uh, through the city and so forth. So we're trying to get our experts involved. CTL is the, the company that uh, would do all the paperwork for us, and we're trying to have a meeting to figure out what we can do with the wetlands and move forward with that. But I really don't think it's going to cause us as much of an issue, and at first I was a little upset about it, but the more I'm out on the property, the more I walk the property, I think it actually adds some character to the, the, the property. And as you walk through the, the isolated wetlands, once we get it cleared out and cleaned up a little bit, there's some beautiful oak trees in there. So I think there's a really good opportunity to do some neat stuff with that piece of property in the long run. Um, you will not see really much happen uh, for a little while. We are now in the design development stage of the project. So the engineers and the architects are finalizing everything to make sure that we can get the paperwork to Fairborn Zoning Board in July, hopefully it gets approved, and then we would start to move through at the end of July, which is the same schedule that we've been on. So for the most part, right now, we're still where we kind of need to be, uh, which is important moving forward. Uh, and then the last thing I do want to talk about is then in the tonight's agenda, you're going to see that we've got four school buses to be purchased. Uh, for the last several years, we've been purchasing four buses at a time. Uh, part of the reason for that is we have a 60 bus fleet. So a bus has to last us 15 years before it gets rotated in and out. So four buses is about a great number to do every year. So you'll see that. And you also notice that the buses are going up in price like a lot of other things. So it, it's, we're getting closer to that $400,000 mark for four buses. Any questions? Uh, just a comment. Uh, when I was walking the, the 
isolated wetland area there. Uh, the gentleman with me said that boy, there's a lot of college campuses that would love to have this kind of thing on their campus for uh, for their students to utilize. It's you know, working in the land grab uh, situation. So I think we do have a unique opportunity with that, even though it makes things kind of difficult. <laughs> yeah, yeah, well, I agree. I mean, it's really neat once you walk inside of it. There's a lot of dead. There's a lot of vegetation that we can eventually clean and go. But there's also quite a few beautiful, big, solid oak trees that came there that kind of opens up. And uh, I think there's some real opportunities there for the students. Uh, so I'm kind of looking forward to see how that progresses. Jeff, of the 86 acres that we have out there, how many acres are affected by the wetlands? It's 86 total acres. I call the, the, the good section about 75 acres because there's some acreage on the other side of the ditch that we're not taking advantage of. So we have about 85 or 75 really good acres between the, the ditch towards 675 and Commerce. Okay. Of that 75 acres, it's right at a little between five and six acres total wetlands between the continuous wetlands and the isolated ones. Okay. They had originally thought that there could be a wetlands located on the south end of the property. There was, they did their determination that there was not. So basically, any trees that you currently see on there or brush is part of the wetlands, except for all the way back by the ditch towards the west. Now, Jeff, can I get you to update the board on our uh, monthly meeting with the city how they were doing the communication with Lake Deer? What are the relationships with the high school program? Yeah, we, every first Thursday of every month, uh, we've been meeting with the city. Uh, Mike Gephardt, Kathleen Riggs, uh, Rob Anderson, when possible. And myself, SHP, and Gene, and once in a while we bring in more people. And last month we had uh, Doug Burton from the city talking about traffic and so forth. So we've done a really good job of communicating probably since maybe last summer, actually. And uh, just trying to work forward. The city does have an easement towards the, the ditch on the west side of the property uh, that we, we asked to be able to move that easement. Is, close to that ditch as possible, and they, they've done that very grace, graciously. And uh, it's just been a pretty good working relationship at this point in time. And it, it's actually really nice to go to them and say, hey, what do you think about this? And, you know, they, they come and talk to us, we walk the site, we do whatever we need, and they've been very supportive of the entire project on Commerce and the Boulevard. So uh, I think by having these meetings, going forward and trying to submit paperwork to Kathleen so that she can present it to the the zoning board and the building zones and so forth, that that will just help that process when we get to July. Hopefully we can walk right through that, I hope. Um, so, so we've done that. And then also the last thing I want to talk about with the future high school is um, SHP has done department meetings. Uh, they have two young ladies that are leading that, Carrie and uh, Mackenzie. They do a great job. We are now in round two of department meetings. Uh, the first round, the ladies listened to every department, ideas, thoughts, so forth, took it back and tried to incorporate as much as possible. We started second round meetings last week, and I believe we finish those next week um, and wrap up with some of those areas. And uh, we had some more again today. So that's going great. Terry and Mackenzie are great at listening to the staff, trying to take their ideas and put them into what their classrooms are going to look like. The technology is incredible how they can flip flop desks and do this, I mean, immediately as they're right there talking and, and so forth. So it's just been a pretty neat process. And I, I, I can't thank those two ladies from SHP uh, more. They, they've done a great job of listening to the staff. So I, I appreciate their efforts in doing that. Any other questions? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Right. Item number eight under budget and finance. The treasurer recommendation is to uh, is made to approve the following two items there along with an attachment um, eight point eight two. And I have a motion to move. Thank you, Andy, sir. Thank you. Thank you, Sheriff. Roll call, please. Mr. Wilson. Yes. Mr. Browning. Yes. Mrs. Malad. Yes. Ms. Reister. Yes. Mr. 
The report. Yes, motion carries. Next item, administrative reports and superintendent's recommendation. Superintendent recommended is made to approve of the following. And we'll continue into page six at the bottom with attachment. May I have a motion? Uh, Mr. President, uh, I would like to uh, recognize uh, an attorney, I just give her name, Mira Griffin, general helper uh, for the clarinet for the service of 27 years of service with the Orange City Schools. So we'd like to wish um, Mira, if I messed up your name, I'm sorry, but I'd like to wish you a very happy retirement and thank you for your service. Thank you, Mary. Any others? May I have a motion? So moved. Second. Thank you, Katie. Thank you, Andy. Roll call, please. Mrs. Millat. Yes. Mr. Wilson. Yes. Mr. Browning. Yes. Ms. Reister. Yes. Mr. McCord. Yes. Motion to carry. Give some do donations. Andrew, can you help us out tonight? I can do that. Be more than happy to. As, as always, we greatly appreciate the, the gifts and donations we receive from the community. Uh, starting off with uh, probably the most uh, common name for donations, uh, Anonymous. Uh, $1,200 for our weight room. Uh, from Ed and Cindy Gibbons, uh, $100 each to the Rex Ackerman Relay and to the Hall of Honor. Jeremy and Stacy Literal, uh, hygiene and cleaning products and Kroger gift cards. And as Mr. Lowry mentioned in his report, Wright State University Athletic Department uh, for the uh, large number of t-shirts. We have uh, turf field donations, Ronald Althoff, $25, Denise Klein Dergy, Dergy, yeah. Derg, Derg, mm -hmm. okay. $100, Ed and Sandy Gibbons again, $100. Green County Youth Activity, $1,000. W.C. Hayden, $100. Uh, Laurel and Elizabeth Mayer, $100. Uh, Daniel Wykens and Bonnie Tomsky, $50. Terry Miller, a very generous $2,200. Parkville Class of 76, $462. Steve and Pat Quinter, $200. Steve Ross, $25. Charles Bain, $500. Mr. and Mrs. Stainsville, $150. And the Woods of Valley Green West, which is off of uh, Park Hills uh, Drive, uh, condo complex over there, is $50. Thank you, Andy. Uh, just a note as I look down through this list, Ron Alto. Used to be a track coach here years ago. Denise Durr, I graduated, she was in my class. Uh, Colonel Mayer and his wife, these, these people always seem to be there to give a little or to give a lot. And we do appreciate them very much. Mr. Philo. Uh, the place is board, we will now go into a work session. Uh, we anticipate that work session um, to last a little bit. Um, then we will go into executive session. Um, come out of executive session and properly adjourn. So, we won't know until we still here. Thanks, Mike. <laughs> 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 I think we've been involved in enough of those. I don't need to talk anymore. <laughs> thank you very much. Good to see you, Mike. Good to be here. Uh, probably be back in June.